So as Craig said, I'm going to uh, do, uh, or we're going to do it together, talk about creating core definitions in Atlas. And uh, since it's going to be, uh, I don't have enough time, I'm going to be very quick. Just a quick recap uh, on some of the definitions of the, and the terms to make sure that we're all aligned uh, and we know what we talk about the same thing. We know that cores are the common building blocks for all observational studies. Uh, we use it for any of the studies that we do in Odyssey, be a characterization study, a patient level prediction or a population level estimation. And uh, we create these cores that can serve as target, comparator or outcome. So how, what is the definition of uh, cohort in Odyssey? It's a set of uh, persons who satisfy one or more inclusion criteria for a duration of time. This has consequences. I'm not going to read it. I'm sure you're all aware of it, but you can see it on the screen. Um, so how do we do that? For that, we have a set of tools. Uh, Mick just uh, introduced one, Athena. And we're going to talk about how we actually do the work in Atlas. And uh, I have pretty much a secret sauce a lot of pens, colorful pens, and a piece of paper when I do the sketching. Highly recommend it, especially if you like drawing. And uh, we use some ingredients or components of um, that we ba basically build this together, which is pretty much the uh, vocabularies. We create concept sets using different domains, and uh, we connect them using a temporal, temporal logic. So let's start. So just to just do a dissection, the anatomy of a cohort definition for everything that we do, we first start with a cohort entry event. So this is something that pretty much tell us like how patients are, uh, the cohort will start, we'll call it, and then it will be used for index state. So if we want to do something that we want to look into an event that happens after a specific, uh, say like a disease occurrence or a disease diagnosis, it's very important to define the cohort entry event correctly and think about it in the context of the work or the study that we want to conduct. After that, uh, we, we actually like look into inclusion criteria, a set of rules that uh, help us define what um, like, what set of observations or person we're including uh, in the cohort entry event. And finally, we uh, define a cohort exits. So how, how do we define like when are these patients for how long are they in our cohort? Like what are the criteria that uh, will end the cohort exit and the cohorts? So for this, like a couple of questions that you can always ask as you're doing the drawing where you just work an atlas, like what is the initial uh, event entry? What are the inclusion criteria and what's the cohort exit? As I said, and the components uh, we use, uh, we define cohorts using domains. It can be a drug domain, a disease, uh, condition domain, procedure observation. We create concept sets within those, like using like different domains or a combination of that. For some of, sometimes we use domain specific attributes. For example, we want to look into PSA. We want to look into individuals with a PSA above 50 or above 10. So we look into values numbers for that specific ones. And then we use a temporal logic to connect them together and build that piece. So for this, uh, for today, I'm going to use one example that we recently worked on. Uh, you've probably heard about the Pioneer study a thon happened uh, a month ago, and you, uh, and as Craig shows, it's going to be like a more uh, deep dive into it in next month. So, highly recommend it to attend and listen more about what we've done. So, one of the courses that we created in the study a thon uh, was looking into newly diagnosed prostate cancer patients. So, as I said, uh, the first and important, like the biggest piece is like, what is our cohort entry event? So he, and then we put it on the whole, like trying to dissect it, create that um, sort of like uh, the structures of the cohort. So here we wanted to look into adults, men who are newly diagnosed with prostate cancer, with the new prostate cancer diagnosis being our index event or an, uh, cohort entry event. We then use a set of inclusion criteria. We want them to be adults over 18 years of old, definitely being men. For this, the definition that we've identified, and that's going to be a longer story, we can get into it at some point, how we define this cohort. We want these patients to have the first initial diagnosis of prostate cancer, but we wanted to make to make sure that they're actually newly diagnosed prostate cancer. We wanted, we wanted them not to have any history of a prostate cancer or any other conditions that are related to prostate cancer, specifically prostate dysplasia during the year prior. So we looked back for another year. 
we want these patients to have a prostate biopsy because like we can identify the first occurrence or uh, the first time that we see the patient in the database, but it's not necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's their first time of diagnosis. Uh, we've done some work and we realize that if we combine it with prostate a biopsy that happens 30 days around the index time, uh, the diagnosis of prostate cancer will have a good, a sense, a high sensitivity and, um, and accuracy to define uh, newly diagnosed patients. For this work, and because the study wanted to look at like what these patients are getting during the follow-up, like the type of treatment, we specifically uh, restrict or limit the, our patients to those who did not receive any androgen deprivation therapy or other hormone therapies during the year prior. So patients are included, they are followed up until the end of observation like or, or until death or diagnosis of other malignancies. Again, because we wanted to look into different treatments that these patients are getting. If they're diagnosed with other malignancies and they're getting other treatments, we can dis distinguish and differentiate the two. So we're censoring them at a time of diagnosis of other malignancies. So let's do it together. Okay. Let's do it here. So this is Atlas. We can go into cohort definition, start a new cohort. Let's just give it a name. PCA newly diagnosed. Mm, diagnosed. Just save it for the sake of saving. So as I said, uh, the first thing that we want to define is the cohort entry event, uh, prostate cancer. Let's just look into the vocabulary and create our concept. So I just oh, typo, sorry, just look into prostate and see what we can find. A very good uh, approach is, okay, prostate. Okay, so this found us, like I limited to SNOMAD because we're looking at the condition. Uh, better approach is to go through Atina and find a specific concept that you're looking for. I'll show you uh, in a bit like why I'm talking about that. So we have like a lot of, uh, conditions on prostate, we're looking into malignant prostate cancer. And if you look at everything that we see in this list, we see two um, concepts that, that can actually that we can potentially use primary malignant neoplasma prostate and malignant tumor of prostate. So uh, because we want to do a network study, we want to make sure that like the uh, concept that we're including pretty much is more comprehensive and it covers um, all the different vocabularies. We can use either, but uh, the primary malignant neoplasm probably going to be more exclusive and more limited. So let's take a look at malignant tumor of prostate. Let's try to start with that. Definitely looking into the hi hierarchy to see the parents and the children. So looking into parents, we see a neoplasm of prostate. We probably don't want to do that because that means that we're including benign conditions and we are interested only in malignant conditions. So under malignant uh, tumor of prostate, we see a set of conditions like primary malignant neoplasm of prostate. So if we include that in all its children, we definitely get this one. But as we go through the list, we see secondary malignant neoplasm of prostate, which means that it's not a prostate cancer, it's a metastasis to prostate, not something we're interested. So what we're going to do is that we're going to select this and we're also going to select malignant tumor of prostate. Uh, come here, create a new concept set called prostate cancer with the rules of having everyone with a malignant tumor of prostate and all its kit, but not having anyone with secondary malignant neoplasma of prostate and its kit. We save it and we have the concepts. So let's go back to our cohort. Here we start. So our core and initial criteria was a condition occurrence of, so the concept set is already created. We found it here, prostate cancer. So we said that- Let's see, two minutes, okay. Ooh, 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 first diagnosis, okay. And then uh, we put the criteria here, zero days before and zero days after, that's done. Then we do the inclusion criteria. We wanted them to be male. Okay. Uh, well, we wanted them to be adults. 18. Da, 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 da. Then the other criteria here, we do uh, condition error. Okay. So we wanted them not to have any um, other prostate cancer history. 
we have them here, prostate cancer related condition. It's an observation that has a, so, it's an, no, not a condition error, sorry. It's a, an observation of prior cancer. I'm sorry, but other history. Okay, I can't find it here. Any observation of? Okay, PCA. Uh oh, we lost this. Okay, right. so we, let's just use another one. So we we don't we didn't want these patients to have any ADT. ADT is a combination of observation. It's a combination of drug. The same thing, and then uh, da, 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 drug exposure. We said that we want this to be between 360 days and zero days before. So we set these criteria here, and. Uh, we save all these criteria, so this we can name them. This is ADT, this was age. Since I don't have time, I can't show you everything. So we pretty much build these blocks together. Uh, and at the end, we're going to have, I can show you here what we will have, sort of like a graphical representation of what we built actually. So a prostate cancer first time patient's history, the patient is male, age, no prostate cancer history. And at the end, we use the court exit criteria here that uh, the sensor and demand would be death or other malignancies. You can see here how it represents, or you can have the text view. We can save it, and then uh, if we run this cohort, you see some numbers, you can see the attrition. This is a prior, like a previous work. 